Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd. So, uh, this is lesson number 84 from the explanation of Al-Ugham Aram. And inshallah we'll be taking the last hadith in regards to this mas'ala about, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's still kind of connected to the mas'ala of al-istihaba. Uh, and inshallah from uh, the next the next lesson inshallah we're going to take the other the other hadith dealing with a different mas'ala. Inshallah. So today we'll only be going over this this one uh, narration, and then uh, the next uh, the next class, Inshallah, we should take about about three three different narrations, and then hopefully in the class after that we we'll just try to finish up this chapter and get into Kitab al Salat because that's like a you know especially for the men <laughs> probably they're probably like uh, can we hurry up and get through with this Allah must die. but I mean it's still it's still things that we, you know even us as men we need to know because. We can't always count on, uh, I mean, the, the vast majority of the times we can't count on uh, the females being knowledgeable of these different masail, you know, these different issues. So this is our duty to at least have this type of knowledge so we can teach our wives, teach our daughters and teach the people that need to know, you know, that we're a lot, you know, I mean, obviously uh, our women folk, you know, that are, that we're, you know, we're the mahram for. Uh, anybody that has questions in this regards that we have the knowledge to teach them so this is very very important even though we ourselves inshallah you know alhamdulillah we don't experience this but you know we we have to have the knowledge because we can't expect them to so allah it's a it's a sad time we live in so the hadith uh, that we're going to go over today is the hadith and uh and umi atiyya radiyallahu anha قالت كنا لا نعد القدرة والصفرة بعد طهر شيئا. This hadith رواه البخاري وأبو داود ولفظ له. Okay, so the love, okay, is for Abi Dawood. All right, so here أمي أم عطي أم عطي أم عطي رضي الله عنها. She said, قالت كنا كنا. It means that this was the way that they were in the time of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. So, kunna here, and he yudullah ala dawam wal istimrar. You know, this is the way it was. You know, you kunna, kunna nafal kada, kunna, in this case, kunna la na uddu kada. And al udda, al adda here, of course, it means like kunna la nahsib. All right, la nahsib. We didn't consider something to be a, you know, well, uh, like here, when she said, kunna la na uddu al kudra, the kudra. All right, first let me go over these two words, al-qudra, al wa sufurata. So the qudra uh, uh, is, the, is the blood, all right, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, uh, it's the blood, al-ahmar, alladhi yamil ila sawad. So it's, it's, it's the red blood of the of the, the menstrual blood, you know, it's, it's red, but it's dark red, and it, it kind of like uh, is inclined to, uh, you know, almost to the point of being uh, black, all right. And this is the, the so kudra here. It refers to the actual menstrual blood. The sufra is referring to the blood that the woman, uh, the the little, uh, it's, it's a yellowish type of, you know, it's, it's red, but it's very, very, very light red to show that the menstrual cycle has has been completed. So this type of blood in the in the lonahul ahmar, yamil ila bayad. All right, so it's kind of like it's inclined to like. Is in, in the opposite direction. So whereas the menstrual blood is more inclined to like it's closer to almost being black because of the darkness of the of the redness of it, but this one is more you know because of the lightness and the blood ending, so it is more is closer to uh, like a whitish color, and that's why it's a sufra. All right, and this shows that the that the this when the woman sees this, then she knows that her menstrual cycle has come to a close. Now she has to take a ghusl, and now she you know she's now obliged. To, to pray fast and anything that you know she has to do at that time. So when she said, "Kunna la naudu al kudrata wa sufrata baad tuhri shayan," is that we didn't consider uh, you know anything that we saw after the menstrual cycle had completed. So once the woman she knew, she saw all the signs that her menstrual cycle was completed. She sa- she's saying that we would not consider the kudra, which is the menstrual blood, the darker blood. Or the sufra, which is the lighter blood, after the tuhr, after the tuhri, I mean, after she has become pure, shayan. Uh, they wouldn't consider it from the from to be from hayl, to be from uh, menstrual blood. All right, so this would be considered if if the woman did see blood coming out, 
then she would consider it al istihaba and not uh, menstruation because she already knows that her menstrual cycle has already been complete. And of course, like I said, this is after the completion of the menstrual cycle. If she still, if she sees this stuff during the menstrual cycle, then of course this is considered uh, menstrual blood at the time of the cycle, you know, and it's still being in her cycle. But uh, once it's complete and she's like, uh, she saw the sofra, she knows that her, her, her menstruation has come to an end. And then after that, she goes and takes a, a ghusl and then she sees blood coming out. Then this is not, they didn't consider this to be from, uh, from, from, the, from the menstrual blood because this is something that came, you know, that she's already seen the end of, you know, her cycle. So this would be considered al istihada wallahu a'lam. I mean, and, that, and that's in the case of a woman who has the issue of al istihada I'm a, if it's a woman who's not uh, from her custom to have this issue and she sees a, a bit of blood coming out, then she doesn't consider anything. She just keeps it moving because if she's sure that her menstrual cycle has already come to a close, khalas. You know, and this was stated by Ibn Qudam and al Mughni when he said, uh, He said, Whoever seen, whoever sees, uh, uh, you know, during her menstrual period, her ad, her habitual period, like the period that she knows that this is the time that she has uh, her menstrual cycle. Uh, if she sees a uh, sufratan, which is the light colored blood, and a kudratan, which is the dark colored blood, for wahayyid, and it's considered, it's considered uh, menstrual blood at that time. When ra'atu ba'da ayam hayyatiha lam ta'atad bihi. So he said, uh, you know, and then he said after that, if she, if she sees it after her days of her menstrual cycle, once her menstrual cycle is complete, then she doesn't consider anything. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't bother herself with it. And also one more thing that I didn't mention at the beginning of this hadith is that her statement, by her saying, Kunna la na'uddu. Now, of course, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, that kunna here it means in the time of the Prophet So this uh, this also uh, this also shows that this, this gives the hadith the hukm of That means that the hadith is more important. And this is a hadith. This is not a statement of Umar Atiyah. This is not her ishtihad. This is not you know this is not mawkuf. This is more report because when she said kunna kunna la na'uddu, uh, because uh, of course the meaning is in the time of the Prophet So this means. That this is a hadith, and this has the hukum of a hadith, and not the hukum of an of one of the athar of the Sahaba, because her stating that this was their action during the time of the Prophet sallallahu gives it the hukum of being marafur. And of course, this is something that we can very clearly see in a statement in a hadith uh, and Jabir ibn Abdullah radhiyallahu anhu radhiyallahu anhu ma qala kunna na'zilu wa al Quranu yanzil. So this is a hadith that he stated. He said kunna na'zilu. Well, Quran uh, uh, all right, so here, uh, what he means by na'zil, he said, kunna, first off, in the time, in the days of the Prophet sallallahu because the issue about the, uh, this type of, this, this uzla, this, uh, uh, is that it means like, Allah uh, musta'an, I'm sorry, man, but al-haya min al-iman, Allah musta'an, you know, shyness is from, from iman, but it's, it's when a, when a man, he, he doesn't want to have, uh, he doesn't want to get the girl pregnant. So instead of, uh, you know, he'll relieve himself on the outside instead of on the inside. Okay, he pulls out, basically. Uh, and this this is what he means. Like, so this is an act that we used to perform. We used to do this while the Quran was being sent down. And, you know, while it was being revealed to Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we used to do this this action. And what he's showing is, He's showing the permissibility of it because if it was something that was haram in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, it would, you know, the Quran would have been sent down to show that this action is incorrect. And this is also a statement of Sufyan. So after the hadith was finished, and this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim, and after the hadith was complete, uh, Sufyan said, So if it was something that, you know, that is prohibited for us, it would have been prohibited for us in the, in the Quran. Like the Quran would have been sent down to prohibit, to show that this action is not correct. So when you see like uh, one of the Sahaba, when they say this action of kunna na'mal kether, or kunna, kunna la na'udu kether, or kunna, you know, so in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this, this has the, the hukum of a rafa, and it is a hadith, because if anything that they were doing in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, especially bil istimrar wal mudawama, you know, that they used to do a lot, you know, normally, just like as you see 
in this hadith of Jabir, and you also see in the hadith of Umi Atiyah, رضي الله عنهم, إجمعين, is as uh, where she said, كنا لا نعد القدرة والصفرة بعد طهر شيئا. So if this was something that was incorrect from the women, or in this case, in the hadith of Jabir, if this action was incorrect from the men, then uh, then the, the Quran would have been revealed. The you know the Prophet sallallahu alaihi would would have received revelation, and the people would have been prohibited from doing it. Being that they weren't prohibited, it shows that the action in this case is mubah as far as the man pulling out. It doesn't like, a, you know, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the woman to get pregnant, she's going to get pregnant. If, if he's written for her to be pregnant, she's going to become pregnant, whether you pull out or don't pull out. So, but uh, but in the end, I mean, the, the actual act is permissible, as you can see in the hadith. And that's that's what that's what he's saying. Kunna na'mal, kunna na'zal, wal Qur'anu yanzal. Just like she said here, kunna la na'udul qudrata wa sufrata. So it shows that this, uh, being that they, this was what they used to do in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and none, of, no revelation came down to uh, pro, to prohibit them from doing that. Then khalas, it has the hukum of being a report. It's a hadith, and uh, alhamdulillah. And I will also mention another issue about this hadith, and that is the the addition, because uh, as half of the Ben Hajar mentioned, that he he brought the narration from Sunan Abi Dawood. Uh, the hadith is in Bukhari, but it's in Bukhari without the 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 the, the wording ba'da the All right. So this this wording uh, called Hakama alayhi ulama al hadith ani bishudud. All right. Uh, and uh, a shudud that means uh, you know it's a it's a narration or something a wording that you call it ma'hu arja minhu. You know, it it goes against the wording that is more authentic. So the Bukhari himself, he left off that edition of Ba'da uh, Tuhri for that reason, because of, you know, because of Hukum Alayhi Bishadud, and it's Ghayr uh, Mahfuz. You know, this is the, the wording of the hadith is without that edition that you find in Sunan Abi Dawood. So if you go to uh, Sahih al Bukhari, you will see that he says, Hadathana Qutayba to Ibn Sa'id, Qala Hadathana Ismail, and Ayyub, and Muhammad. And Umi Atiyyata qalat kunna la na'udu al-qudrata wa sufrata shay'an. So you see uh, the same exact hadith, but without the wording ba'da tuhri. So this is because even Bukhari, he did not see that wording as being authentic. And he left the wording out. But Sunana, in Sunan Abi Dawood, Abu Dawood, he brought that wording. And here, half of them in Hajr, he brought that wording. Uh, wording but the correct wording is without, without ba'da tuhri. All right. And of course, I mean, if uh, if we would just wanted to, to, to waste time, we could go over all the different aqwal, you know, because there's, there's a lot of different of op- a lot of difference of opinions. But in the end, you know, whenever like uh, with all the difference of opinions, we always go back to which is the opinion that is closest to the meaning of the hadith, and that's the opinion that we take. I mean, if there's any, and that's that's if there's any issue with the understanding of the hadith, because if the hadith is clear. And the action is with the hadith, you know. You know, so we act on, act upon the hadith, and it's just like uh, Imam Rajab said, you know, just to clarify, he was, uh, I said they broke, uh, you know, broke up the opinions of uh, the ulama into three different categories. It's, it's, you know, to go over that again, it's just, it's, you know, I wouldn't say that it's a waste of time, but the people don't need it right now. So, but uh, Imam Rajab, when he when he said in Fatal Bari, he said, "What well, called Akhtar Salaf," and, and if you notice, he said. That the majority of the Salaf said, because there's always going to be difference of opinion in these issues, no matter what. Certain people see certain hadith as being authentic that aren't authentic, or or vice versa. And Allah Mustan. And the ha'ida ra'at sufratan aw kudratan ba'da al-ghusli aw ba'da thuhri fa inna hatu salli. So he said that if the woman sees the the sufra aw kudra, so whether it's the the light colored blood or the dark colored blood after the ba'da al-ghusli after she has taken a ghusl. That means that now she's, you know, she's uh, she's purified herself. Or even after the tuhur. That is, this is now like once she's seen the sufra and she's seen that, the, that her menstrual period is finished, even if she hasn't taken a ghusl yet. But in the sali, you know, obviously in this case, she would like to sali after she takes the ghusl. And then he mentions all the people that narrated this. And he said, وَمِمَنْ رَوَى ذَلَكَ رُوِيَ ذَلَكَ عَنْهُ عَائِشَةً وَسَعِيدَ بِنُ الْمُصَيِّبُ وَأَطَاءَ وَالْحَسَنُ وَإِبْرَاهِيمُ النَّخِعِ وَمُحَمَّدَ بِنُ الْحَنِيفَةِ وَغَيْرُهُمْ 
All right, so, and, and that's what he said at the end. He said, well, hadith, um, atiyah, yadul ala, ala dhalik. So, I mean, the hadith itself, it shows that this is the correct and the most authentic statement. That if she sees any blood after she has purified herself, then she doesn't, like, la taltafit, la taltafit, la taltafit ilayh. She doesn't, you know, she doesn't pay, pay any mind. She continues, she uh, prays and does all her acts of worship uh, uh, as she would normally do. Wallahu a'lam. Wa ilahuna subhanakallamu wa bihamdika shadu wa la ilahe la ant astaghfiruku